top of the hour because he's got a uh, another obligation. So for those of you joining us, thank you. We're going to take a couple more minutes to warm up here. It's Martha, you see right there. Martha, you're in Kansas today, is that correct? I'm in Kansas. The sun is shining, but they're predicting storms. So, you know, any minute it can all be different. <laughs> if, I, if I see a rowboat going by with some people rowing, then we know it's a problem, right? <laughs> right. I'm sure being from Kansas, you hear those horrible jokes from time to time. Well, you know, we, we get a lot about the Wizard of Oz and tornadoes, but I just like to say there's no place like home. Yeah, I agree. Well, it's a beautiful state. Thank you. No doubt about it. So for those of you joining us, if you get a chance, go over to Amazon right now, search under Beyond Sticky. Uh, you'll find Martha's book there. It's a fantastic book. She's going to be covering a lot of the subject matter today. We're going to get into it in a couple more minutes. Look, she's holding it up. So it's um, That's right. it's a That's good right read. Home. It's a, it's a good read. It's a pretty easy read. It's a weekend read, as I like to call it. Uh, 172 to 173 pages, and it'll reinvigorate you. Uh, it'll get you to realize that you don't need to be a commodity. And uh, there's a lot you can do, a lot of behavioral change you can drive, and a lot of messaging you can do that, that'll bring your brand to life, something that's near and dear to my heart. we got another couple more minutes. we got 27 people on right now. And we're live with Sirius XM. We're going to have to syndicate our, syndicate our show because Austin's got a good radio voice. I think my radio voice needs a little improvement. Oh, I think it's good. It's very good. If I smoke like four cigars in a row, I could probably pull it off. I do the James Earl Jones thing. <laughs> don't recommend that would be it. Impressive. I don't recommend it. Yeah. Folks really starting to roll in now. Give us some shout outs real quick. We got one minute to go. I know that. Let's see, you got some folks from Carolina Premier here and Citizens Bank. Uh, some credit unions rolling in. Several strategic partners are in. Appreciate you guys jumping on. I think there's going to be a lot to learn today. So we're, we're up close to 35, 40 folks now. Awesome. And we're nationwide. We've got people coming in from all over the country. And Martha's in the middle of the country. So this is this was all orchestrated. <laughs> I saw your note there, David. David. David from the Chicagoland area is in. I just watched a documentary on Chicagoland. Pretty famous. So we're uh, I'm gonna allow another 30 seconds before I get going. So for you who just joined, I'm going to say it one more time. To get a chance, go out and uh, download Beyond Sticky or go to Amazon. Look for Beyond Sticky. It's Martha's book. Um, fantastic book. Uh, I think you can learn a lot. It's very much in tune with the needs of the community banking and or credit unioning space, as I like to call it. Um, definitely worth it. Definitely worth it. So why don't we get going? Uh, I've already hit record, a little housekeeping. Technology being as it is may get glitchy. If for some reason you uh, drop off, just drop back in. It's that easy. If uh, Martha's picture freezes or something like that, I've got her cell phone number. I can text her. Don't give up on us. We will be uh, back momentarily if there's a problem. Uh, a little housekeeping, a little further housekeeping. Tomorrow at 1 o'clock Central, we have our next happier half hour and uh, we've got live music tomorrow uh, that you're not going to want to mi miss it's with a uh, singer and songwriter out of nashville called jason white the guy's fantastic and we've raised uh, several thousand dollars for nonprofits, small business uh, it's really a celebration of the uh, entre entrepreneurial spirit that's going on in america right now in light of all that's going on so anyway let me introduce myself i'm brian claggett i am your uh, host today and uh, our presenter is Martha Bartland Pyland, with an emphasis on pie. And I, <laughs> I like pie, just so you know. We had cupcakes on the other day. Um, she is the president and CEO of a company called Banktastic. If you get a chance, take a look at them. Just Google Banktastic. You'll see them right there. Martha's an author. She's an inventor, a speaker, a motivator. And you'll, you'll see that in a minute. And an innovator. 
And uh, since grade school, she's been an entrepreneur. She knows the importance of planning, something that we all know. And, uh, and she's uh, very much into building strong banking relationships. And those of you that know me, I believe on what is known as the return on relationships or R on R. Clients like to think of her as a personal trainer. Um, she's very inspirational. And, and, and I think you guys are going to get a lot from her. Um, she takes a very holistic approach to strategic planning, which is very important, especially in light of what's going on today. Uh, she's very results oriented. Uh, she's a highly sought out speaker. She's conducted seminars and mot motivational uh, talks throughout the US and Canada. She's also a graduate of Leadership America. She was uh, chosen as IABC's Excel honoree in 2008 and the 2010 Woman of Excellence by the Career Chapter of American Business. And again, she is the author of Beyond Sticky. Today, she's going to speak about some things that are near and dear to my heart. Banking is very much a commodity, unfortunately, and it does not need to be one. Uh, the banking industry, in my opinion, is the epitome of the human experience. Everything that we do, everything that we worry about, so much that we worry about, rather, is tied to finances. And banks and credit unions have an opportunity to be an, an advocate. And in being an advocate, they actually can break that, that commodity trap. So today she's going to talk about the importance of knowing and communicating your why. She's going to talk about the practical examples of how to make your actions support your why. And finally, the importance of engaging everybody in your institution. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Martha. All right. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for that. Nice introduction and thank you to all the strategy core folks for having me along today. I really appreciate clients and friends who signed up and, and some new new faces that I guess I'm virtually seeing today. So thank you all for being here. Um, so yeah, commodities as as financial institutions, we know that many of our competitors have very similar products and services. And if we don't occupy a space in the minds of our customers and our audiences, then we, we kind of get reduced to price. And instead of that relationship and that value, we're competing on price, which is a race to the bottom, and we don't want that. So today, we're going to talk more about that and how to get off of that commodity hamster wheel and grow that love for your brand. So I'd like to start with a story. And this is uh, an introductory story in my book, Beyond Sticky, because it, it really inspires today's conference, but also a lot of what's in my book and a lot of what my approach is um, here at our company on how we work with, with financial brands. So here goes, meet Sammy Hamster. When I was a little girl, my brother Ted kept a tiny pet hamster named Sammy in a glass cage topped with a royal blue lid in his bedroom. Sammy had a shiny silver wheel, plenty of toys, food, and water, and my brother filled the bottom of Sammy's cage with fresh cedar shavings. Sammy loved to run on that wheel, often running for hours. So Sammy was happy, and so was Ted, but it was still a cage. One day, Sammy must have realized, like the rear sled dog, that unless you're the leader, the scenery never changes. Sammy dreamed of freedom. That day, he started to chew on those cedar shavings that lined his cage and pushed them around into new arrangements. Soon, he had jammed those shavings up under the wheel, locking it into place. And with that, Sammy had transformed his wheel into a ladder. He easily climbed to the top of the wheel, reached the lid, and chewed a hole just large enough to escape. And then he jumped. Now free, Sammy had the run of Ted's bedroom and a vast new world. Sammy had engineered a brave and innovative method of escape. Let him inspire you to get off your commodity hamster wheel that burns a lot of energy but takes you nowhere. It's time to push your organization and round into some new arrangements. Let Sammy help you reimagine your business and create a ladder that leads you up to your own vast new world of opportunities and success. That's a true story about Sammy. So today we're gonna to talk about the importance of knowing your why, making your actions support your why, 
and the importance of engaging everyone in your institution, and I do mean everyone. So, first off, I'd just like to go into my little academic brand, Brand 101. What is a brand? Well, there are lots of definitions, and if any of you studied this in school, there's probably a lengthy narrative. But what I really like is what Jeff Bezos says. Your brand is what others say about you when you're not in the room. That's pretty straightforward. We all get that. Um, the thing is, we don't necessarily know what they're talking about. And everyone talks. So obviously our customers or members are talking. Our prospects, we hope they're talking about us. Referral sources, vendors, employees, possibly our board. So there could be other people, but all of these people out there in the world can be talking about your brand. What are you giving them to talk about? If you don't have a concerted effort and some consistent messaging and some consistent ways that you do things, they're all gonna be speaking from different perspectives. They might be sharing stories that really are not quite where you wanna go and there can be confusion in the marketplace. That doesn't establish a firm depiction of you in the minds of your prospects and customers. So let's talk about why a brand is better. Okay, so, so you say, Martha, it's nice to have that consistent message, but why, is it, why does it matter? Well, I think there are some really key things that benefit you in the long term if you have a strong brand. The first off is people trust a brand. And, and we know this, if you are shopping online, if you're shopping in a store and you see a brand name product versus something you don't know, you assign more trust automatically to that brand that's got some reputation for you. Next, people talk about brands and hopefully they're talking about this brand in a really good way. And we do it everywhere. So we talk about brands standing in line at the grocery store or in normal times uh, at a little league softball game, perhaps with another parent sitting on the bench. We talk about it on our social media. I might vent about something on Facebook or I might share something I love on Instagram. And then of course, there's all those review sites, Google reviews, Amazon reviews, um, Yelp, TripAdvisor. And think about this, people even trust strangers who are talking about brands and we listen and we believe them. So this is really important. People like to associate with strong brands. And this is something that also is everywhere, but sometimes we, we don't really notice. But if you just open your eyes and look around, you'll see the person wearing those tennis shoes with the three black stripes or the ball cap with a sports team logo on the top, or perhaps some apparel with a country club logo or a Broadmoor logo. Those are, those are ways that we show we like to be associated with the brand, but it could also be the car we drive, the type of phone device we carry. It could be those shoes with the red soles. Even more, some people want to be associated with that brand so badly they'll tattoo it on their bodies. Have you all seen a, a Nike tattoo? I have. Have you seen a Harley Davidson tattoo? I've heard about this, but I haven't witnessed one. That is somebody really committed to being associated with a brand and showing everyone that they love it. People pay more for a brand. And this I think is especially important as we think about our financial institutions. People really have trust and love for a brand. They're willing to pay a little bit more. That could be in terms of a slightly higher rate. It could be, I'm going to pay more for this checking account, but gosh, look at all this value I get from it. It could be, I have to drive a little farther to get to that branch, but it's worth it to me. Um, or I might have to wait just a little bit longer to talk to a CSR. But again, I, you know, I'm willing to do it because I love this. I love this institution. So we really want people to be willing to do that if we've built these other things for them. And finally, people are loyal to brands. And isn't that what you want? They come back to you over and over again. And if that combined with all these other things about talking about paying more and associating with are combined then you have long-term revenue and profit that you can count on for your institution because now you have a deep relationship. Warning, warning, um, things that brand is not. Sometimes when we first sit down with an institution 
and we want to talk about a branding assignment, we ask them questions about what's different about them or, or why are they better than their competition? And we hear, oh, fast local loan decisions. We know your name. We hear that one a lot. Well, we know everybody's name when they come in. Excellent customer service. Our, our service is, is second to none. Well, I think all of those things are really important and they're valuable, but that's the price of entry. If you want to be a level playing field, you've got to at least have those things. Then you can add in those other benefits. If you don't have these things, they're probably not going to talk to you or they're not going to be with you very long. Something else that I think is important to think about, um, your brand is not just based on an individual or some certain personalities in your institution. So even if you have a credit union CEO who is really um, just friendly and lovable and everyone in the community knows her, that's not the that's not the institution's brand. Or if you have this, this group of loan officers that are just so involved in things and everybody loves them, that's not your brand. We really need to be thinking about your institution as a whole. So it's personalities, it's that experience that customers have or the experience employees have when they're there. Um, your product offerings, all of those things working together are helping to build and differentiate your brand. So I think a really important key to that is knowing what your purpose is marrying that inextricably to your brand. And that's how you create that true love that you're going to have for a long, long time that maybe somebody will tattoo your logo on their arm. So let's talk about that. How do you figure out what your purpose is? I think that takes some introspection. It takes some good discussion with your colleagues around the table, other people in your institution, probably also some of your customers or members. And I think you need to ask a lot of questions and listen and think about what are we here to do every day? What are we here to do for both our internal customers and our external customers? What makes us excited to get out of bed and come to work? Are we excited? If we're not, then we need to be looking at that too. What do you really sell? You sell more than a package of financial products. You sell something else. What is that unique thing that your institution sells? Could be financial health and well being, a secure future, prestige, honest advice and frank counsel, safety, freedom from worry, small business success. Maybe it's a deep commitment to local. But you've got something in your DNA, it needs to be discovered. It should be both authentic and it should be aspirational. So, as I said, it's deep in your DNA. Um, you can't just decide that your purpose is something that you're not because everybody can spot that right we all can spot those posers or those those fake people or brands right away so we want it to be something that really is true to us and it's also got to be aspirational so what is worthy of our highest and best selves what can we continue to reach and grow for if we combine that together then we've got something that we can really live and feel great about it should drive decision making Sometimes I think people believe that a brand is just, that's marketing's job, but really it's everybody's job and it should decide, drive decisions that we make in our institution so that we can make that brand worth through and through. So let me give you some examples. Um, if we start with purpose and brand in the middle, what we're here to do, then we can start building out products solutions are the experience the positioning that we have in the marketplace our pricing um also those marketing things that you think about such as your slogan or jingle or what people hear when they're on hold but also what kind of events you do or sponsorships you undertake um what the experience is in the branch how you interact with people when when you know that purpose and brand then you can think about how these other things support that and all link together Okay, so that's like my textbook graphic. Now we'll show you an example of what that could look like in true life. So we're going to say bank X for purposes of, of anonymity, right? And brand X is brand and purpose is financial health for all. So you see all is emphasized there. So that's their purpose, financial health for all. And if we start on the left hand side of the screen, we can see those internal things that we're doing with our employees, maybe a 
board or an advisory board that are internal audiences. So we might start out with some things like a robust 401k match. Um, we might have some, some clubs inside the institution, like an investment club or a coupon club or a book club where people read financial um, books and discuss them. We might offer tuition reimbursement or send, send our, some of our people to ABA banking school so that they can learn more and further their careers. We might offer some volunteer opportunities that again point toward financial health for all. So that might be volunteering for junior achievement or free assistance at tax preparation time or um, mentors for employees. So those might be some ways that we would volunteer and help grow people again in this realm of financial health for all. I'd also like to see banker cross training because as a banker, whether customer facing or not, if they understand financial health for all is what we're trying to do, then we can build in experiences for our customers that help foster that. Then on the right-hand side, that's our outwardly facing communications and tactics. So of course, we're going to have advertising and social media and things. In this case, rather than doing a more traditional bank ad, this Bank X is doing commercials that are more like public service announcements that help people know about better ways to save, promoting responsibility with our finances. Um, we use our social media for health tips, or excuse me, for social media, saving, investing, those kinds of tips. Um, online, there would be a good credit card analysis tool to figure out what is best for me, perhaps multiple calculators to figure um, in interest and payments on, on loans and things like that. The other thing that would also support financial health for all would be education for customers. So we might have webinars for our business customers. We might have different kinds of seminars or webinars for our retail customers and really segment those out based on where they are in their life in their lifespan. So our baby boomer audience has different financial cares and needs than our millennial audience. You know, we have a national millennial advisory board and, and the millennials tell us that um, they're not confident in their abilities to make long-term financial decisions. Um, they're a little bit concerned about their investments and whether they're budgeting correctly. Well, this would be a great way to make sure that you are giving them what they're hungry for and support your purpose of financial health for all. So these are just some different examples. Oh, in school branches, I love this idea of getting kids younger and younger to learn about saving and um, what loans really mean, and perhaps even building some future workforce if you have them working in your in-school bank. So you can see here how this purpose then is really connected both on the inside and the outside in the actions that we take, as well as the advertising and, and messages that we put out in the world. So I think as you're thinking about your purpose and your brand, it's really important to say, is this tangible? Can I measure this? Or is it just lip service? Is it kind of snazzy? So you think again, how are you making decisions? If we're about financial health for all, we wouldn't have our employee um, retreat at a casino. If we're about greener futures, then we would make a really conscious effort to be good stewards of resources and not invest in fossil fuels. You know, that's something else our millennial audience tells us. But the important thing is we can't be all things for all people. Um, Nike isn't for everyone. Harley Davidson isn't for everyone. Um, your bank can't be for everyone. You don't have enough resources to manage all of that, but you can discover your specific group of important customers and bind them to you. Martha, okay, Martha, real quick question for you. Do, do you find that a lot of people, do you find that a lot of bankers fall into that trap where they try to be all things to all people? Yes, I, I do. Um, because it's, at first, when we say that, we say, well, we're for everybody. Well, of course, we have, we're great people and we can help everybody. But the problem is you don't have enough time and attention and budget to reach everyone and really have those best connections. So I think you're better to identify who's that audience 
that really resonates with your brand and purpose and then get all of them. And they're going to share their brand, their love of your brand with other people that are like them. And right. there's, there's plenty of business to go around. I think that's a better, I think that's a better approach. If you try to be all things to all people, I think you spread yourself too thin and then you yeah. yep. have a I, hard time making an impact. Yeah, I, I would agree. I, I think there's a, there's a authenticity to brand. that's very important. And, and I think that uh, authenticity is impacted by everything you brought there as well as product design. Uh, you mentioned mm -hmm. pricing, obviously pricing is a big component of it. You know, you can't be all things, to all people, but those, you want to be very meaningful to the people that you know you can impact. And that drives that authenticity, which is then supported by, by trust. And ultimately, that's what you know, helps drive revenue, whether you're a bank or a credit union. So, okay, thank you for that clarity. Absolutely. Yes, that's great. Um, so I had a couple more examples that I, I wanted to pull out. Um, for example, if your, if your purpose was all about keeping it local, and I, I touched on that earlier, then here are some ways that you might implement that. You might pledge to purchase your supplies and services only from local vendors. You might support charities who keep their services and research local. Um, allow employees to volunteer on bank time and help local nonprofits or offer your meeting spaces to local groups at no charge. So you get the idea there. Or um, if your slogan was making, if your purpose was making um, banking accessible and easy as pie, I don't know, that's a terrible slogan, but you get the idea. Then you would make sure your digital branch technology is second to none if you wanted to say, how easy we are to do business with. You'd pre-fill paperwork so that when you meet with customers, their time is kept to a minimum. Um, you could maybe set up automatic approvals of safe deposit box renewals and things like that so clients don't have to mess with it. Um, those are all ways that you could um, implement supporting your purpose and brand. That's stuff that people understand because it helps them and makes their lives better. So I've got another question from the audience. Another question from the audience. You, you've talked about go local a couple of times, and a number of our clients leverage our our go local mechanisms, which is our Bazing product, which offers a merchant component to it. Do, do you see the go local movement increasingly uh, appetizing to community banks and and credit unions, uh, even post COVID? Do you see this kind of opening up even wider? I I think so. Because um, the businesses and people who have come out of this with the help of a financial institution and with the help of the community pulling together, I think there's going to be some increased solidarity there. I don't think people are going to forget that very, very fast. Yeah, I, I would agree. I mean, I'm just looking at what's going on with the, the PPP loans and you know, the response from small business. And you know, a lot of people out there, the Joe Castillas of the world, are, are really talking about the impact that this is having economically on Main Street, right? And even the SBA is talking mm -hmm. about that. And I think that banks have a, uh, and credit unions have a very important role in supporting uh, Main Street at a very uh, hyper-local level, as well as from a regional level. You know, we've got a number of regional banks that are on, on the phone right now. So that, that go local, I think, has legs, as they say in the marketing world. And, and I think it impacts product design and and the your ability as a brand agent or employee or marketing director or VP of marketing to drive that authenticity of the brand. You, know, you literally have to put your money where your mouth is in today's world to be viewed as authentic. Okay, thank you. Absolutely, sure. Okay, so uh, this is everybody's job. There, there can't be any silos. And I mentioned earlier, you, you can't just rely on marketing to do this. It's really everybody in the bank working together to make this happen. So I say, if you implement this correctly, you'll have ever widening circles that overlap, build and grow. So you see that um, all the best ideas in the world can't happen to implement unless we have everybody there pulling together. And, and I think employees are extremely important. So even at a management level, you are putting these ideas together and figuring out how to implement, but then employees have to know and they have to be able to explain it to people outside. So for instance, you know, earlier I was talking about pledging to purchase supplies from local people. Well, 
you better have purchasing and HR involved in that decision, or otherwise, how are you going to really deliver on that brand promise? Or if you're offering meeting spaces to community groups, your facilities manager better be involved because he or she is going to have some some things to do with that to make sure that that works properly. Or if you're doing things with um, automatic safe deposit boxes and some of those easy steps that we want to offer to our members, well, we better have IT and compliance and operations involved too. And then no matter what it is, it has to filter out to the employees because they're the ones talking to people out in the community. And if someone comes up to them and says, hey, I hear we can um, use your conference room for our, our um, volunteer meeting, the employee better be able to say, oh, yes, and here's how you can sign up instead of what? I didn't hear about that. So, you know, making sure that you've got those good communications all through and through will help you really activate that purpose because everybody will be on the same page. So I call that my banker math. My one plus one equals three. And um, that if we can really marry our brand and our purpose and then cross connect with everyone inside the bank, we get much greater return on our investment than if we were just, you know, it's more than the sum of the parts. So when you really implement and align that purpose and brand together properly, it goes back to those, those five circles that we had in the beginning. We, we build that trust and we know, especially with financial decisions, people don't take those lightly so we want to build that trust that we know people have got utter confidence in us that we want to offer value and solve a problem so again that's worth something um, it's not that commodity low price or free checking thing no it's something better we're going to make things better for them and that is meaningful we're going to create buzz so now people are talking about us on their social media or to their friends in the line at the supermarket or at the little league games and they're sharing this great experience or this great stuff that they're getting from their local institution we'll promote those associations and attract others so people want to wear our logo or people will be proud to tell people hey you know um i got this this wonderful building loan from my local credit union here's all the things that they did for my business you you got to talk to them or you know whatever it is, making sure that people are advocating for you. And then you build that loyalty. So you have them coming back again and again. That delivers your long-term revenue and profit. So now you might be saying, okay, Martha, that's all nice and everything, you know, letting people use my conference room or you know, making these pledges, but but how do I measure this? So that's really important. I, I believe very strongly in measuring in your work, work your plan. You know, Brian said, I'm, I'm like a business personal trainer. I think so. And so, you know, drop and give me 10. We've got to make sure that we've, we've got these measurements in place and we're working toward them. So we need to benchmark now, where are we on these things that we want to improve? And then we're going to measure them again, maybe six months later and maybe a year later. So here's some things we could look at. Increased referrals from within. Maybe our employees are so excited about our brand that they're easily talking about us and attracting other members or other customers to come to our institution. Um, satisfaction survey changes. I think this can be extremely valuable. You can do this with employees and you should, and you can also do this with customers. So how are we now? What's our benchmark here? And then we can repeat that and see. How have we moved the needle? Increased applications. Hey, a lot of our clients talk about workforce being a, a really important issue, you know, attracting the best and the brightest to come work for them. Well, maybe that's part of what we want to do too. So increased applications for the positions that we have, that would be a marker that we could look for. Decreased turnover. We know it saves us money, but also if we're investing long term in our employees like uh, like our bank x um, we want to keep those people because they in turn become those great magnets to customers and prospects to pull them in to do business with us so we want to hang on to those employees because they're 
a very valuable asset. Increased sales, of course, that could be new accounts or that could be more relationships with those individual customers and members that we have. Increased market share, of course, that's not hard to measure. Increased profit margin, that's music to everyone's ears, right? Absolutely. So we can look at a combination of these things. Of course, you can have other measurements too, but, but it's, it's important to start with what do we want to achieve? How are we going to measure it? What's our benchmark now? And then check back in. And I think, again, as earlier I said, talk about engaging employees and making sure that they're a part of this. Then reporting back to them, here's what we learned when we did the study, or here's how we've moved the needle and get them excited and help them know that they're going to help move, move things forward for the institution as well. Okay, so I want you all to be like Sammy. I want you to push those shavings around, look at some different things that you need to do in your institution to really build that purpose and brand so that you can turn that wheel into a ladder and jump into an exciting new world of opportunities and success. So I've got a I've got a question that just popped up that's a, that's a really okay. good one. You know, as as the world is moving more towards digital, right? What what's going to be the yes. impact? How do we take digital into consideration in what we deliver, both in product and the services? You know, be it alternative delivery. Um, how do we make sure that our brand remains authentic and connected to the to the customer? And, and how do we use those delivery channels uh, to to assure the brand's authentic and, and driving trust? I know that's a loaded question, but that shift that's is a big. lot of questions. <laughs> yeah. so let, let's start small. Okay, so let's, let's start small. So so mobile, for example, you know, there's a shift to mobile that's remarkable. How do we make sure our mobile remains remarkably relevant and supports the brand message? I think that's a really good question. And I think I would like to take a step back and just say, uh, talk about a conversation I was having with someone yesterday who said, you know, before this crisis, I thought there was no way we could do business with customers through video. Like we had to be there. We had to be there. And now I'm saying, hey, that's not so hard. So I think some of it is adjusting our mindsets that yes, we can do it. If we talk about mobile, Brian, um, one thing I particularly like on the, the mobile app I have on my phone is when I log in, it says, hello, Martha, welcome back. It uses my name. Now, I know in my head that that's not really a person there, but it still makes me feel good. It makes me smile. It makes me feel like the institution is appreciating me. Right. Um, there's lots of things that we can do on mobile by having live chat or um, again, showing some of those local things that are happening or just recognizing some things about me that um, makes me feel like they know me. So, I mean, I think those are small touches. Um, but certainly, you know, video tellers, that was that was really starting to happen more anyway before this. I think that's really nice for um, especially like older people. My mother has a hard time just at a at a drive up or doing banking when she can't see someone's face, but we can she can see a face and talk to them. It makes all the difference. So um, I think there are a lot of ways that we can build that personal touch. Um, that personal connection in, we just have to try a little harder or we have to be a little more um, innovative. I think just even with texting and emails, sometimes in this world, we get in a hurry, right? We just fire something off by text or, and then we think, oh, well, I didn't put a smiley or I didn't say, how are you? Or uh, so sometimes just stepping back a little bit and thinking, how can I make this a personal exchange before I just instantly do something? I think also can can make a big difference. And, and can can brand be productized in a digital environment? Do you think? How do you mean? Did well, I mean more Brian. I'll give you an example. I mean, we already know we're we're in this high tech, high touch world, right? And and the consumer today views banking as a chore fundamentally. So how do we mm -hmm. design product? that's in a digital world that truly supports a brand message or a brand purpose? 
there's no easy there's no easy answer to it I, I, <laughs> but, I, but i think that's a real challenge for especially for the smaller banks you know i've got um I, i've got glenview on right now and he you know his, his concern is you know they're trying to reach a younger audience and their big competition mm -hmm. it's the mega banks right and, and mm -hmm. he wants to deliver a high tech, high touch environment that not only provides ease and convenience and reduces the chore of banking, but builds their product and builds their brand so that it's truly differentiated. So, so to me, you know, the building product at, at, with with brand in mind is very important. You you don't build product just to solve a product need you have to consider that that brand architect or that dna of the brand that you're trying to tie into and and from yes. our point of view from my point of view that's that's what i like about uh, what we're doing with with checking accounts you're taking a very commoditized product like a checking account and you're saying you know what there, there are rewards that we can add to that but, but they need to be in a digital first format and then we encourage our, our we encourage our our clients and our, our our bank friends to to build that product so it's anchored in their brand. We want it to be theirs. You know it, that's why white labeling is so important. But you know, digital is going to have a huge impact on, on banking. There's no doubt about it. You got the neo banks, the challengers out there that are all building this like this high tech, high touch stuff, and they're really high tech, right? You know, they don't have the branch infrastructure. I, I think that community banks and community credit unions actually have an advantage over fintechs because at the end of the day, a, a person's on their mobile phone, something goes wrong. It's, it's like knowing there's an OnStar button there. I can always call a real <laughs> yeah. person. You can call a real person. Like if you're on Google Maps and Google Maps collapses, have you ever tried to call Google? I challenge any of you to find a phone number <laughs> at Google, right? or your Google wallet right. fails, who do you call? So, so I think the real challenge is gonna be, you know, bringing all that together. And I think it's an opportunity for the, for the banks. You know, I think product and delivery has a profound impact on a financial institution's ability to really be unique. And one, another question too, um, it doesn't yeah, add before you should before you uh -huh. go to a different question can i can i give you a couple of thoughts on that also Absolutely. Um, i think people can take baby steps you know your institution doesn't have to implement all of these things overnight right but if you know what those steps are that you want to do then you can take them uh, the other thing is if you're particularly interested in a younger audience build a build a millennial advisory board for your institution get you know 10 to 12 young professionals or or people that you want to hear from and convene them with a zoom group or someday maybe with a lunch around a conference table and ask them questions and have them tell you what they want and have them help you because not only will you get some really good honest feedback but then they'll also be so excited to tell their friends about what they've just learned and how they're helping influence um banking and that brings up a good way to probably conclude the session. So, so to me, and, and I think a lot of our, our viewers would agree, brand is about engaging an audience. It's about a, a, a conversation. And I think that's where community financial institutions have an advantage, especially in a digital world, right? Digital is one way. I, I, I use digital to do something, to conduct a transaction or um finish a chore right but but a an engaged brand is one that that you have a conversation with that's why i think social plays such an important role you don't talk at people yes. you talk with people and you did the whole i think it was a cocktail analysis at the beginning you know people are talking about you today right if you're using technology to actively listen you can actually engage that audience and solve problems right there live and i've seen a couple and i hate picking on the airlines right now i've seen good airlines do that and i've seen bad airlines do it the wrong way right i had a problem with an american airlines flight years ago and i went on twitter and did a little rant and i was at dfw and delta was listening i was not able to make a santa fe speaking engagement 
and I had to get back to Richmond, Virginia. Delta jumped in and said, hey, Brian, we'll take care of you. And they flew me back via Atlanta at no charge whatsoever, right? So they were listening. So it was a highly engaged brand that had a conversation with me. Now, that said, because I like the product of American, and I like the reward product with American, I still pretty much stay with American whenever I can, right? Unfortunately, none of us are flying right now, which is a big challenge, but okay. any final thoughts you'd like to add? I think it's just really important for people, as you said, Brian, to have a conversation and to listen. So we have social media, that's free, but don't just put stuff out there, put stuff out there and respond. And like a cocktail party, ask a question. And if that one doesn't fly, then ask another one. And pretty soon you will establish a conversation. Um, yep. If people are unhappy, respond. If people are happy, respond. And um, I think, step by step, person by person, you will build that brand love that they won't want to go anywhere else. Yep. Well, Martha, listen, thank you very much. Appreciate your time today. Again, the name of the book is Beyond Sticky, Get Off the Commodity Hamster Wheel and Create a Bank Brand. Check it out on Amazon. Uh, if anybody wants to get a copy, send me a note. I could probably get you a copy pretty quickly. And don't forget tomorrow, one o'clock central, we got live musical entertainment coming from Nashville. It is not Dave DeFazio singing. He's got a guy named Jason White. He's really good. Uh, and I think you guys will enjoy it. So, so go to uh, strategy core backslash H3 and check it out. And again, thank you all for being here. And thank you again, Martha. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Brian and strategy core.